Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing a full kind of look over of Roger Parfum's Aoud collection. Uh, the little note to make is that they this doesn't come with Taif Rose, it's not included in the set. Um, and it also doesn't include Musk Aoud because that one is discontinued, they no longer make it or sell it, it's not available anymore. You can still find bottles online in various different places. Uh, but the Roja website itself no longer supplies it, they don't make it anymore, it's discontinued. So those two will not be featured, however the rest of them are here and I'm going to do a review of every single one in one video. There will be chapters, if you're not interested in certain ones you can skip a chapter to the next one if you like. I want to be kind of a little bit careful in the video of, of pointing out that these are personal opinions so if you're a real hardcore fan of the brand and I say something that isn't super positive please don't be offended if you are easily offended um, by opinions of a person about a perfume then just don't watch the video <laughs> uh, we're gonna dive into it um, I'm gonna give a quick kind of little snippet before we start so before we get into the reviews, I'm going to read you a little snippet from Luca Turin in his book Perfumes the Guide, uh, his newest book. And in it he, he talks about Roger Dove and gives quite a few different reviews. We'll mention a few of the reviews briefly. Uh, this is direct quote from Luca Turin. According to the ever-reliable Michael Edwards database, Roger Dove's perfumes are art directed by him. He claims to be, quote, the world's most respected perfumer, end quote, and compounded by Argevely, a minor player in the fine fragrance industry, and then goes on to mention that they're responsible for one of the worst ever masculine perfumes ever created. A lot of people um, for a while, for a long time, believed that, you know, the Creed family actually made the perfumes. And uh, we found out recently with the book that was published, uh, Ghost Perfumer, that that isn't true at all and that they just have a silver tongue and kind of are good marketers, you know. For anyone that thought that these were hand created by Roger, it would appear that that is not actually the case. But I want to point out that is an opinion, it's Luca Torin's opinion, it's an opinion that I've heard from multiple people, not just Luca Torin. And so feel free to not believe it if you really love Roger Dove and you want to believe that he makes them. Uh, maybe he does, uh, but I'm just sharing an opinion of Luca Torin and of others that I have heard, which seems to indicate that, that uh, it goes the same way as Creed. A quick example of uh, a Luca Torin review of Roger, or Roger. Um, this is for Roger Haute Lux. Uh, boring retro woody floral of the kind you'd expect to find in a small, half-empty, unlabeled bottle in a French flea market. I do think personally Luca Turin gives him a little bit of a hard time based on the marketing uh, thing that he plays off and uh, Luca's not a fan of that. So I think uh, it does give a little bit of a bias in the negative reviews personally. We're going to dive into the Aoud collection. I'm going to be as honest transparent, clear as possible. I did purchase the sample set myself with my own money and we'll get into it with the first one. These are all the uh, Parfums editions rather than Eau de Parfums, like pure Parfums, the concentrated version. I have been wearing all of these on my skin uh, and writing full notes throughout the day and in this video we're going to smell them from a test strip because I've already, well, there's too many to put on skin this time but I have already worn them out on skin so these are full reviews on skin, um, but the video will include smelling a little paper test strip to remind myself. Uh, there is a lot to get through. I've written a lot of notes for each one, so I'll be kind of going through the notes and kind of reading you the highlights of what I got from each one to make it more of a comprehensive review of each. Um, so we're going to go with the first one, original Aoud or Aoud. And I'll read you the note list. Uh, lemon, bergamot, verbena, geranium, rose de may, uh, jasmine, elang elang and rhubarb, cinnamon, nutmeg and saffron with patchouli, cedarwood, cashmere wood, sandalwood, oud, vanilla, leather, ambergris and musk. So the colour of this one is the darkest of the lot. It's almost black I would say. I mean it's very very dark. 
and you can see that the stain that it does on the paper, it literally, you know, <laughs> it's dark. So if you're wearing a white t-shirt, be a little bit careful with that one. Uh, they all come in uh, like a crystal version, I think, so you can get a completely clear version of it without the color. What I notice immediately from this is a rose accord. I'm going to call it a rose accord because I don't think personally, and I just want to point out these are just personal opinions that I'm not stating facts. These are an opinion. I think it's probably um, using some rose de may, real rose, but it's probably supported by an additional rose accord. I just wanted to jump in during the editing process just to give a little bit more detail because I was a little bit vague in the video. I just kind of say rose accord and then kind of move on. Just to be a little bit more specific for you, why I felt like it might be sort of a rose accord on top of a rose de may is typically, from my own experience at least, using real rose is, is difficult in the sense that the regulations around the allergens within natural rose oils are limits to the amount that you can put in a fragrance and typically it's very hard to make it as a top note where you can actually smell it clearly as a top note uh, just relying solely on say you know an absolute or a rose otto uh, because of the allergen restrictions so you can only use a certain percentage so how perfumers get around this is they create a rosy accord from a couple of different synthetics put together that creates this rosy illusion which I've made myself and it's uh, kind of typically this kind of classical French way of making a rose accord is like a standard well-known accord in perfumery it's not any kind of secret and it's usually quite bright fresh crisp rose again very rosy and a top note impact and so they do it to give you that top note impact of rosiness and then um, the tail sign for it for me is when it starts to you get the profile of that fresh clean bright rosiness uh, after about 10-15 minutes you'll start to smell one of the materials come through the rose accord which is a widely used material in in modern perfumery and it's one of the key components in a usual standard rosy accord is a material called geraniol uh, which has this kind of lemony citrus um, sharp citrusy lemony quality to it and as the rose accord starts to dry down you'll start to smell the geraniol 10-15 minutes later and you'll you'll smell this very clear lemony like citrus quality coming through in the blend and that's that's the geraniol in the rose accord and that's what I get with this particular perfume, is I get this very bright, fresh, top note rose going into a citrusy, geranium, geraniol-like, uh, lemony kind of note. I can't state with fact that that is absolutely the case. Maybe he does use an absolute enormous amount of rose de May and they remove the allergens uh, to be able to do that. And, um, you know, maybe, possibly. I'm just giving an observation based on my own experiments, my own experience, and it's just a possibility. But there's also the possibility that I'm wrong. So, you know, I just wanted to throw that in there as as why I felt like maybe it's a rose accord combined with the rose de May. When it comes to smelling the real rose absolute or real rose otto, you're more likely to be smelling the real at the kind of one hour to four hour mark. Um, kind of within the first four hours of the fragrance as it develops into the mid that's when you're going to get the more qualities of the natural rose coming through presuming that they use natural real rose in a quantity that is perceivable to the nose bright fresh cleaner crisp almost slightly pink rose the citrus in the opening is quite light soft touch not too citrusy not particularly juicy the rose is the first thing you're going to smell there is just a hint of saffron, but it's not hugely strong. You just get a little bit of a sense of that kind of slightly more exotic kind of spice. But I think the opening is quite pleasant. It has a nice rose accord, a little bit of saffron, a little bit spicy, and this kind of very neutral smelling kind of musk accord uh, that kind of wraps it up.
So to read a little bit from my notes here, I've written floral musky, quite mild. The musk envelops it and softens it all. Um, then I mentioned later as it starts to dry down, becomes ever so slightly sweet. A cloud, a kind of cloudy cotton wool effect. I mentioned the rhubarb briefly that it just gives a slight hint of a tart kind of bitter quality but it's quite subtle but you kind of can pick it up when you kind of read that it's in there. I mentioned that it has a quite nice diffusive uh, kind of bubble, leaves a nice kind of little bit of a trail in the air. Uh, there's a slight sharp citrus floral quality in the early mid coming from what I would say is the uh, not the natural rose de may but the the traditional rose accord providing that kind of slightly more citric fresh quality in my notes i write that after about an hour it becomes sweeter i get more of a vanillic kind of tone coming from it maybe even i wrote possibly even a little ethyl maltol because it has a slight candied kind of sweetness that kind of red sweet kind of smell that we're kind of all familiar with although not as much as you get in the next one we're going to talk about but just a tiny bit in this one in comparison I write that uh, the woods come out a little bit as it dries down I get a vibe of a woodiness in the in the dry down don't get me wrong but it doesn't strike me as being massively an oud fragrance considering it's literally called a oud you would expect a lot of oud I get a mild woodiness that's not very specific um, in terms of an oud profile. This, the oud, is very soft, mild, in the background, kind of in a low dose, I would say. You don't get a specific profile as in terms of smelling it and going, oh yeah, that's a Thai oud or a Hindi oud, for example. You don't get that, you just get a, a vague kind of woodiness. But he does list other woods in here, not just oud. There's cedarwood and sandalwood listed. I get a general woody feeling, again, not specific to um, overly oody in its scent profile. An impression of an oud-like quality, again, not particularly strong and definitely balanced with other materials, including uh, multiple synthetics. In my notes, I write the wood quality is quite light, pale and behind all of the musks and the ambergris accord, slightly powdery as it dries down at the two and a half hour mark. And then later in my notes I write, at the three hour mark, I would describe the composition overall as a floral woody musk, mainly built around a fresh rose accord and light woody musks with just a hint of sweetness. I write in my notes that the oud accord or oud note is never particularly hugely noticeable. It is, seems a general light kind of woodiness in the background. And then at seven hours, I wrote a very faint, mellow, woody note, very smooth, woody note, um, pale, clean, absolutely no funk, as in no kind of Hindi quality oud, for example, that can smell a little bit cheesy, a little bit funky, none of that, very clean, pale, mellow. And in terms of performance for a oud, around eight hours longevity on my skin, with a reasonable projection and sillage in the first hour before kind of sitting closer. Altogether, I actually, overall, I think it smells quite nice, it's quite pleasant. I wouldn't particularly call it Aoud, personally I would have called it Rose Musk or Musk Rose for my own kind of sense that I smell myself. I get the main notes of, like I say, Musk and Rose. <laughs> I think if you like slightly more Middle Eastern kind of perfumery. This will remind you of things that you might smell in Dubai. I've spent quite a lot of time in Dubai because I've, I've worked there. And this is the kind of smell that you might smell walking around Dubai Mall. Altogether, quite pleasant, musky, rose, soft, pale woods, uh, decent performance. Uh, leather is listed, don't really get leather in this personally. Ambergris and musk is listed. I think you get more of a musky quality than ambergris. But it does have this kind of ethereal quality that ambergris brings, so I think there there is a certain level of ambergris in here. Like I say, is, there's quite a lot of a kind of musky quality to it though. The next one we're going to talk about is Amber Aoud, and I'll read you the note list. Lemon, bergamot, lime, rose de may, jasmine and ylang ylang, fig, cinnamon, saffron, patchouli and oak moss with sandalwood, oud, benzoin, oris, birch, ambergris and musk. And we'll start off with a Lucatorian review of Amber Aoud. 
Luca Torin writes, Amber Aoud, Roja Dove, to star, which means not good. Quote, routine, woody, fruity rose, Luca Torin. This is the colour, it's not as dark as the original Aoud, and we'll give it a spray to remind myself, and you can see it does colour the strip. Again, if you're wearing a white shirt, just avoid the shirt because it will stain. This um, is immediately quite sweet. I get again a rose, what I'm going to call a rose accord. Fresh, crisp rose accord, jammy sweetness, things along the lines of ethyl maltol, that kind of red sugary candy floss like vibe. You're going to get that kind of jammy candy like sweetness in this with again a rose accord. Going to my notes, I write don't pick out much citruses from the top. I get a sensuous feeling of soft, warm musks mixed with uh, jammy rose. I wrote that there was something almost slightly animalic for a moment, but kind of went away quite quickly. Um, spices seem to be balanced, but in the background are kind of subtle. There's a warmth to the fragrance, but I think it's coming from something like ethyl maltol, which gives that kind of warm sugary kind of sweetness that a lot of people really like. Um, I wrote that there is a slightly kind of orisey kind of powdery vibe to the fragrance as well. I write really quite sweet as it starts to dry down on skin, that kind of ethyl maltol kind of vibe uh, becomes quite strong on the skin as it starts to dry down and actually kind of, for me, kind of masked over and ruined the rose accord. It was, it was too sweet. It kind of hid the rose behind all this kind of jammy, sugary sweetness. And you lose any quality of using something like Rose de May, which is a high quality, beautiful smelling rose. It is lost behind the sweetness in this. I write in the notes, after about two hours, that sweetness starts to kind of tone down back a little bit and you get more of a slightly ambery kind of vibe with a, kind of a, a noticeable musky quality to the fragrance. Hints of floral, but still kind of behind the sweetness. In my notes I write, not much oud to kind of uh, pick out. It doesn't really stand out. Uh, it seems to be in lower amounts where it's not overly dominant in the blend. It's a little bit more subtle. You get this kind of nice, again, pale, soft, woody quality without being particularly specific or hugely dominant in the blend. Again, about the oud uh, characteristic, I wrote neutral, clean, no funk, very smooth, very pale. I write um, at the seven hour mark is a skin scent and I get basically a sweet kind of ambery, musky kind of scent that's not hugely defined, um, but pleasant enough. I think pleasant, likeable, quite unisex. I should actually point out um, unisex kind of qualities of, of the first two. The first one being quite unisex. This one also equally unisex, man or a woman. Both cooler weather fragrances, I would say personally. Although the original Aoud, just to go back to it briefly, could be worn in the hotter weather because it lacks the sweetness that this one has. This one, I think, will be cloying in the heat because of the obvious dose of sweetness. The original Aoud, that would work fine in places like Dubai where it's very hot. This one, I think, would be cloying and a bit annoying in the heat. I would save this one for, for evenings when it's cooler or the cooler months. That's really my impression of Amber Aoud in terms of its longevity and performance. Around seven to eight hours in longevity. You can smell a little bit longer faintly, but generally speaking, seven to eight hours. Projection and sillage was fine in the first hour or two, I would say, and then seems to kind of come a little bit close to the skin, a little bit more intimate. For me, the sweetness element kind of ruins it. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that kind of jammy sweetness in this. And yeah, I would have liked it to have smelled a, maybe a little bit more natural. I, like I say, the synthetic kind of sweet thing. In terms of pricing, we'll just mention it briefly. Retail price, £595 sterling for 100 mil. I would say that this is overpriced. In a personal opinion, I don't see that this is worth that amount per ml considering that it is quite reliant on synthetics and the oud isn't hugely noticeable. I don't personally 
think that that is good value for money. I think if you want something that is high quality, you can find it elsewhere and get better value for money. The next one is called Enigma Aude. Notes, bergamot, aldehyde, geranium, peach, sandalwood, and aude. So the opening, I think, is actually quite lovely. I think this is quite pleasant. I like it. <sighs> Slightly sweet. Um, I'm he writes aldehyde and peach as two separate notes in this. Personally, I would say it's peach aldehyde C14. It's not really an aldehyde, it's a lactone. Um, it's called aldehyde, it's not actually an aldehyde. Um, but you get this kind of creamy, peach-like effect that uh, C14 has, and it, when it dries down, it actually, for me, I would describe it as slightly powdery as it dries down. I actually like C14, I think it smells great. I might use it myself sometime. Um, very pleasant material. You get uh, a vibe of something like that. I, I can't say for fact that it definitely is that, uh, but it would be in my opinion that it probably would be something along those lines. So, in my notes I write peachy, musky, kind of bubbly opening. Hint of the bergamot, very pleasant. I get a little bit of nuances of the florals of the kind of... Although, I don't see rose listed as a note here, but I got kind of a slightly rosy vibe, a little bit of the geranium. Um, kind of adds this kind of floral texture. I wrote that it's slightly sweetened with vanilla. And again, the Aoud or Oud isn't hugely dominant in this. It's very kind of subtle in the background, a little bit of a nuance of a woody character. And again, I would say he's using the exact same kind of Oud in all of them because they all smell the same, pretty much. Uh, it's this very pale, soft, nondescript, woody accord, um, which kind of vaguely smells of a nudey kind of soft, woody, pale vibe. Again, not specific to a particular character of Oud from any particular region, you just get a very soft woody nuance that goes a little bit more in the Middle Eastern kind of territory of smell, of composition, I would say. The C14, slightly sweetened with vanilla, seems to be the main player in this fragrance throughout the whole of the longevity. Again, paired with just a little bit of um, floral and a little bit of this kind of woody character as it dries down, which definitely does add a character to the fragrance, but it's not overly quote unquote oody, it doesn't smell massively oody <laughs> as a term. In my notes I write nine hours, absolutely no real change. Uh, woody notes slightly more kind of increased, still C14 vanilla thing, uh, more of the prominent notes in, in the blend. And, and that's it, there's not much to talk about with this fragrance apart from it smelling like C14 and a little bit of floral and a little bit of woods and a kind of a musky quality to it. Quite pleasant, quite nice. Uh, I don't mind the fragrance, I think it smells good. I think a woman would smell better, I would say, than a man in this. It would mean a little bit more feminine. No reason why a guy can't wear it, obviously. But in general, I can picture a woman typically wearing this a little bit more than a man. To me, I would think summer, spring and autumn, daytime or nighttime, dressed up or casual, quite actually versatile, quite pleasant. I don't think you'd ever offend anybody. In terms of performance, around nine hours longevity. Uh, quite good, actually, sillage projection of a kind of a nice kind of bubble that you can smell it on yourself for quite a while. Those synthetics help, you know, lift off the skin and give it this kind of, like I say, musky kind of bubble around you that's quite pleasant. In terms of value for money, that one uh, retails at £595 for a 100ml, which is £5.95 per ml. And this is a synthetic aldehyde with a bit of vanillin and some light pale wood. For me, no, it is not worth the money at retail. Absolutely not. I think that's actually a little bit scandalous personally. <laughs> We're just talking personal opinions and I have a little bit of personal experience um, based on making my own stuff and pricing my own stuff and kind of knowing what things are worth and what I'm smelling from this doesn't give me, you know, that value for money of £5.95 per 1ml. Uh, almost basically call it £600 for 100ml, I think. <sighs> 
I, I think it's a little bit crazy, to be honest. I, I don't agree with the pricing of that. I think it's uh, far too much, personally. The next one we're gonna talk about is called Qatar. Uh, these are like this uh, city kind of uh, signatures, so to speak. Uh, notes list of peach and pear and candy floss, cashmere, Aoud, saffron, labdanum, and musk. So Qatar was probably my least favorite of the bunch. It is... <laughs> How do I describe it? A big dose of synthetic suede leather with candy. I mean, it, literally candy. I mean, candy floss is in the note list. That's what you get. You get ethyl maltol candy floss-like vibes, vanilla kind of overly sweet vanilla, like vanillin, you know, very sweet, um, with a big dollop of synthetic suede leather accord, and it smells cheap. Personal opinion, I'm sorry if I offend anyone, but I'm just being honest, it smells, to me, it smells cheap. It doesn't smell good. Uh, I don't like the blend. The leather, suede leather, I'm not going to say which synthetic it is because there's a few different synthetics uh, of leather and suede materials and it might even be a combination of more than one but you, that, you get this synthetic suede leather and you get sweet quality. So with this one I do also get the um, C14 aldehyde thing going on in here as with the previous fragrance. Uh, aldehyde is not listed in the notes, but they do list peach. I think it's probably C14. Again, it's not really an aldehyde. Uh, it's a lactone, but you get this kind of creamy, powdery, fruity kind of smell from it. You get a little bit of that. You get the candy floss vibe, and you get synthetic leather suede thing. So that's uh, two, well, three prominent synthetics in the makeup of this of this scent for the majority of the fragrance, I would say. I do, however, get a little bit of a pinch of saffron, which uh, redeems it a little bit. I like saffron, it's an expensive material. I think you could pick up a little bit on the saffron and that's actually quite pleasant. I wrote in my notes that it's not quite as sweet as Amber Aoud, which really goes quite jammy on me. This doesn't go jammy. That the peach is not as strong as in Elixir Aoud, Having the C14 in here is, it feels a little bit like it's taking from Elixir Aoud and adding a little bit of that Accord of Elixir Aoud into Qatar, but adding leather, essentially. As it starts to dry down, you get a little bit more of an ambery kind of Accord and a musk. And I wrote, after two hours, a skin scent, a very soft, leathery, ambery type feeling, hint of the C14 peachy kind of accord, which again, kind of slightly creamy, fruity, slightly powdery as it dries. Slightly red candy sweetness. Um, again, I've written powdery, musky, delicate bubble. I don't really pick out a huge amount of oud. I get, a, again, pale, soft, mellow woodiness as it dries down. And in terms of performance, seven to eight hours longevity. And sits quite close to the skin after the first hour and becomes a skin scent after two hours. This is my least favorite. And again, in terms of value for money, I think this is extremely overpriced on a personal opinion. I don't see the value in this one. It's very expensive and the materials that make up the bulk of the fragrance are not expensive materials, so to me it just doesn't uh, warrant the, the price tag that it has, personally. Again, personal opinion, value is in the eye of the beholder. If you love the way that this smells and you see the value in it, then by all means. The next one is Sultan of Oman, and this one has notes of Rose de May and Jasmine, Violet and Raspberry with Cardamom and Elm. Saffron, Gersham, Papyrus, Oak Moss and Cedar, Gayak Wood, Amaris, Sandalwood, Oud, Carrot Seed, Oris, Frankincense, Birch and Musk. The most, the most noticeable thing for this is the spice. You get a cooling, fresh cardamom in the opening. I think you get the elm quality in this. It's slightly resinous, green, um, not quite herbaceous, but certainly kind of green and resinous with this kind of spicy, cool freshness of the cardamom. Looking at my notes, I've written slightly green, sticky, resinous, fresh, and spicy. Starts to become a little bit herbal smelling as it goes, 
after the initial blast of spice and then the frankincense comes up and it's quite strong very noticeable frankincense accord in this the raspberry just gives a hint of sweetness it's not as sweet as the other two but just a little bit of a slight fruity sweetness the frankincense seems to be one of the major players in this particular blend in my notes I write after about two hours I get a woody musky slightly sweet accord which is actually quite similar to the dry down of Qatar and when you smell both at the three hour mark they actually fairly similar in terms of the way that they smell the blending is quite similar um, to the point of if you smell each one simultaneously back and forth you could get a little bit confused as to which is which but there's definitely similarities between the two of them so that's I think three of their fragrances that are relatably similar so to speak like the C14 thing is in two of them that makes them smell a little bit similar this one is similar to the last one um, <laughs> in terms of when it starts to dry down they smell quite similar to each other so I would say Oman and Qatar are relatable in the dry down not in the opening at all but in the dry down uh, similar kind of accords are used in my notes I write, after about six hours I get a soft powdery dry down, slightly sweet, that raspberry thing kind of goes through the whole fragrance. But it's subtle, it's not overly sweet, but a nuance, and it does last the duration. But it comes again slightly powdery, and again I wore this around family and they also described it in the same way as so it smells powdery. I don't love it, I don't dislike it, I'm kind of neutral. I think for my own personal taste the cardamom is a bit overpowering in the opening but in general the the kind of vibe as it dries down is is kind of pleasant I don't mind it at all but I wouldn't uh, go out of my way to to wear it or to buy a bottle for example in terms of performance seven to eight hours longevity reasonable projection and siage in the first kind of hour I would say unisex leaning slightly on the masculine just because the opening is quite spicy and that kind of resinous kind of green quality is a little bit more typically masculine leaning i would say fairly versatile at least in terms of season you could wear that in the heat okay the, the actual cardamom the cooling effect of cardamom would probably work in the heat and it would work all the way through to winter so in terms of seasonality i think it's actually fairly versatile in terms of when you could wear it, I think it's, it just depends if you like the smell, basically. I don't think you'll particularly offend anybody. I think, in general, people wouldn't mind you smelling like this as it dries down. It's not like super niche or super crazy. It's quite palatable. Moving on to the next one, which is uh, UAE, United Arab Emirates, with notes of bergamot, artemisia, geranium and rose de may, jasmine, ylang ylang, a clove, blackcurrant, pink pepper, cumin, cypriot, patchouli, oak moss, gayak wood, oud, benzoin, frankincense, labdanum, and musk. Um, so yeah, let's give it a spray again. So this one is quite floral in the opening. Again, bright, kind of more crisp, sharp florals. A little bit of the citrus, again, providing a little bit um, more of a fresh kind of quality to the opening. The rose stands out as a little bit more of the dominant floral in the composition um, but you get a little bit of a mix of floral I would say I think you get the qualities of a geranium which again has this kind of almost citric like fresher kind of quality um, slightly green I've written slightly green woody herbal in kind of places as it starts to dry down I do think you get a little bit of vibe of an incense accord coming from a frankincense note the black currant I've written is subtle but maybe adds a little bit of a kind of a sweetness. The main notes to mention are rose, a subtle spice, I think you get a little bit of a pink pepper more than the others, but you get this slightly peppery, fresh, uh, rosy, floral quality to the perfume. I don't pick out any kind of clove or cumin which is good because I'm not personally a fan of those, so don't worry I get more pink pepper from this. As it starts to dry down, it gets a little bit more ambery, more of a classical amber accord, like Labdanum, Benzoin, Vanilla kind of combination. Oud, very minimal, 
subtle traces of a soft, pale, woody character. This one seemed to sit close to the skin on me. I wrote that it's quite tasteful, it's not abrasive, it's not overly sharp, but also it's not particularly memorable and it doesn't scream the highest luxurious kind of floral quality in the world, uh, which is what he markets it as. I think if you want, you know, crazy level floral perfumes, then go to brands like Arige L'Adore. Um, that will provide you with a way more higher quality uh, natural floral in massive quantities rather than this. So in my notes I write soft, rosy floral, mix of ambers and woods, slight incense notes, sl subtle sweetness, a clear sense of light synthetic woody musky molecules that gives it a little bubble around the skin. Uh, which to me kind of took away the kind of a little bit of the quality of any of the nice nicer naturals in here. This kind of woody musky molecule-y thing going on that kind of covered it over a little bit like a sheet of plastic is what I wrote in my notes. It looks like you're looking at a rose through a clear plastic box. That's kind of the effect in my mind that it has on the accords in here. After an hour you can start to get the woody accords mixing with the rose, resins and musks. After two hours, I get a more noticeable oud accord more than any of the other blends. Uh, it smells a little bit more Middle Eastern in the dry down in terms of the scent profile. Four hours faint skin scent of a soft, mild, woody oud accord. Again, a little bit more Middle Eastern in its scent profile and style with an overall longevity of nine hours. So you're looking at nine hours on the skin. Four hours, it's a skin scent. It does sit closer to the skin than some of the other ones. In general, I think the the kind of floral accord is is quite nice, quite pleasant. I think a lot of people will, you know, be quite happy with that kind of accord. It doesn't stand out to me. Um, I think in terms of florals, I I would say nicer. I would say quality and blending style from something like a Ducita Paris. If you want floral, check out Ducita. I think they make good florals, good quality. You can smell. Um, and they're more affordable than, than the Rosier. I think value for money wise, Ducita would be my suggestion to, to you out there. Um, if you want something that along the lines of this with florals and woods, then Ducita would be a good option. A lot more better value for money for me. This one, again, very high end on the overpriced level of a personal opinion. But this is one of the more pleasant ones uh, to my own taste, I think in general, quite nice. If you like florals, um, you'll enjoy that one most likely. It's quite pleasant. In terms of um, kind of gender, I would say right down the middle of unisex. A man could easily wear it. A woman would smell nice. Uh, it would work in the summer and spring, ideally, I would say. And that brings us on to the last one, which is called Sweetie Aoud, with notes of bergamot, artemisia, uh, rose de may, um, like a pastry kind of cake accord, cardamom, cumin, gersium, cypriot, patchouli cedar, gaiac, oud, juniper berry, amaris, frankincense, and lambdanum. So, we have sweetie oud. It smells like a cake. It smells like a cake shop. I get a pastry kind of fresh cakes, sugary, vanillic. It's like walking into a very sweet cake shop with icing sugars and, and soft jammy cream cakes and you know, all that kind of thing. It smells like that. It's, <laughs> it's a synthetic, sweet, cakey, I mean, I'm repeating myself, very sweet, very cake-like, very edible. Clearly a synthetic accord that is very overly kind of sweet. So in my notes, I write sweet opening, a little bit of the citrus, uh, but not much. Uh, very gourmand, very cake and pastry, basically like a cake shop. Faint hint of spice, but not a whole lot. As it starts to dry down, you get a little bit of a rose accord coming through, which is a little bit, again, slightly brighter, fresher rose. And so you get this slight kind of rose in a cake shop kind of vibe. After about 10 minutes, that kind of cakey, gourmand, very sweet kind of thing starts to settle down a little bit. Um, reminds me of, at that point, I've written that it reminds me of scented candles, specifically like, um, you know, the ones that smell like kind of cupcakes and cakes and vanillas and those kind of more sweet, 
kind of candles and it's not just me that thought it my family members also said that the first thing when they smelled more in the mid of this fragrance it's specifically in the mid not in the opening not in the dry down it's the middle part of the fragrance it smells like a candle like a scented candle yeah my family was like oh that smells like a yankee candle and it just smells like a, a sweet kind of candle so sweet kind of candle and it's like it's the it's the smell that you get in the air after you've burned it and blown it out you get this kind of candle smell of sweet kind of you can just tell it's a candle when it's in the air do you know what i mean by that <laughs> you get a little bit of that vibe in the mid of this fragrance where it's going to maybe remind you of a scented candle in the, in the way that it smells even in kind of the texture of it weirdly but as it starts to dry down you get a little bit more nuances of th things like patchouli and cedar which deepen it which make it a little bit more woody and textured and a little bit less like a candle it makes it a little bit more interesting you start to feel a little bit of the resins coming through um, although i don't particularly get a frankincense i get more of a labdanum kind of feeling from this more ambery after an hour and a half quite soft uh, the sweet notes kind of tone down a little bit but is still quite noticeably sweet and vanillic musky amber um, with these kind of mild slightly light pale woody tones again not overly oud centric again the oud for me is the same oud accord in all of them and it's very pale very light and always in the background there's really not a whole lot of change with this i've written six hours no change from the third hour mark and i've written 11 hours faint hint of vanillin basically synthetic vanilla in terms of performance 12 hours longevity very long lasting but a skin scent from like five six hours it's a skin scent uh, but 12 hours later you'll smell vanillin on your skin essentially a creamy musky soft vanilla note is what you'll be left with in the far dry down this is the longest lasting from the aud collection and personally one that represents again another one that's not value for money i don't see where the value is per ml for this fragrance it's just i don't see it personally again i think you're paying with this brand at least with this collection you're paying for uh the brand image you know you're paying for a, a fancy high class marketed brand in fancy packaging with a beautiful bottle with a jeweled cap these are luxury pieces in a collection and they make a statement but you are paying for the privilege of a fancy bottle in a fancy box with a fancy brand name marketed in a fancy way i think that oud accords are quite minimal i've no doubt that there is real oud in there i'm not saying that there isn't but i think it's in the background and i think it's quite soft and not in the front so they're not oud dominant fragrances they rely quite heavily on a mix of synthetics i think they use select high quality naturals in smaller amounts backed up with obvious synthetic accords which are quite dominant in the perfume blends in terms of an overview of my favorites i would say the original aoud is quite pleasant i like the rose accord in this it's not too sweet although there is a little bit of sweetness there uh, I think it's quite nice. I think this is the best one for me on a personal taste level. This is the best The original Aoud was the best one. I think Aoud Amber or Amber Aoud is too sweet for me that kind of jammy sweetness kind of ruins it to be honest for me um, Enigma Oud uh, not bad um, Qatar uh, Not my favorite. Uh, I think that's probably my least favorite to be honest uh, the obvious like I say, synthetic leather suede thing with the candy kind of sweetness. It, I, it doesn't make sense to me as a blend even to represent Qatar. I would be, if I was from that region of the world, I'd be a little bit offended if that perfume represented my culture. <laughs> uh, he describes it on the website as driving back in a luxury car with leather seats coming back from the fair. Doesn't smell good quality. It smells cheap in my opinion. Uh, Sultan of Oman, interesting blend. I don't dislike it, but I don't love it. Uh, UAE, kind of indifferent. Sweetie Aoud is is quite tasty. I think a lot of people will really like it. I think you would probably get compliments with it, even at least in the you know you know people that like sweet fragrances. They're they're always popular. If you smell like a walking cake, people are going to go, "Oh, you smell nice." So Sweetie Aoud is the most mass appealing, most likable, most likely to garner you a compliment. 
and the most overpriced, I would say. Um, I think you get robbed with that one because I just don't see the value in the raw materials in there. Aoud, I think, is the best one. I would say grab yourself a sample of that if you can try that one. I, I wouldn't overly go out of my way to recommend the other ones. If you've got a favourite from the brand, uh, do let me know. Hope you enjoyed the full kind of review of the Aoud collection. I bought them all so you don't have to. That will be the name of the video. Uh, take care and I'll see you soon with the next one. Bye. One time he disappeared for oh, two or three days. When he came back they, they asked him where he'd been and he said, oh, just sailing. <laughs>